I'm mentioning Longhorn specifically because they do not use dole call in the construction of their race cars. And I want you to tell us why and the properties properties of Pro Molly versus dole call and why you guys believe that's a better product to build a race car with. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this that I've had a lot of conversations. After we talked, it got the wheels turning in my head. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten a lot of questions dr- directed to me about the Longhorn brand because that's what I'm involved with right now. That, right. that is my cup of tea right now. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I know if if I was had, you know, I have some knowledge from my GRT days from turning wrenches on the GRT modifieds and being in, working in contact with that manufacturer. I have contacts with um, Longhorn Chassis and Labonte Racing. Um, I have contacts with um, suppliers and vendors back east that, you know, we, we've bounced these questions off of them, and it's kind of one of those things of when Doe Call first came out to the market, it was brought out to our region of racing mm-hmm. when um, X-Factor race cars and SDMF race cars merged to form the next-gen modifieds, which um, great race cars, w- which were really good race cars piloted by Jesse Williamson, right. was the inaugural driver in that car, very successful race team. Um, get, diving this deeper, I started looking at what are these cars actually made out of? And I'll be honest with you. I'm going to preface this. I don't know for 110% fact what Longhorn puts into their late model chassis and what Longhorn puts into the modified chassis from a metallurgical standpoint. Okay, well, let me get that. Because I'm before we get into this, okay, I'm not making I'm not making a point for Pro Molly or a point for Dole Call. I'm going to make a point. And I think you will probably agree with this. Every manufacturer, and I know where you're going with that when you said that, Every manufacturer has their house driver, okay? We all know when you're Jonathan Davenport or when you're Scott Bloomquist or any other house driver for a specific brand, you're driving something a little bit different than what everybody else is getting. Can we agree to that mostly? I will disagree on certain terms. 99.9% of the time, the house driver has something just a little bit different than what they sell to the public. I, I would I would agree with that. Okay. The, We're good the, there. The vast majority of house drivers have something different than... That's what I'm saying. That's the point I'm making. I, and I can tell you for a fact that there are cars that are identical to house driver cars. Okay. I'll agree to that, too. But what I'm saying is, before we get into this conversation, is one manufacturer that might say, yeah, the dole call's not our thing. Can you guarantee that uh, that car is 100% non-dole call? That's that's what I was trying to say right there. Or the other way, a dole call car that right. has maybe some pro molly in it. I can give you that. That's and uh, again, there, I'm there not trying some... I'm not trying to make an argument. I'm not yeah. trying to I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to look at it from both sides here, okay? I I I agree I, with I'm you. sure I, it's out I, there. I agree with your thinking. Okay. So I posed this question to a couple different people in the chassis manufacturing mm-hmm. world. Okay. Um They've had experience with Doe Call. They've had experience with Pro Molly, which is Pro Molly, and, and I, I, I need to explain that. Pro Molly 4130 mm-hmm. and Pro Molly 4130 are metallurgically the same metal. Pro Molly 4130 is a private branded Pro Molly 4130 from Plymouth Tube Company that is held to higher industry standards with uh, ANSI ratings. That an ANSI is a standardized testing procedure. Otherwise known as ANSI, ANSI. which actually has their hands in helmets as well. Exactly. I mean, they, they do. They, so they going have, into that, I want ex- you to talk about those standards on that metal and what they are. So you start talking about Pro Molly. They have an OD tolerance. When they start talking about you know your OD tubing size of plus outside or Outside diameter. Outside diameter, plus or minus five thousandths okay. of an inch. Okay. They have a wall range, different, you know. Uh, wall thickness. Wall tolerance of plus or minus 15%. And All that, the way through consistently on the tube. And that, correct. And, well, period, for the right. whole manufacturing. So if you get one stick built today and one stick built 10 years from, or a year from now, plus or minus 15%, and that's for wall thicknesses over half an inch. Okay. Below a half an inch, it's 10%. And then they have ANSI specifications, and they have specifications, and American Military, I believe it's 
American material standards or American metal standards specifications and mill specs. Mm -hmm. They build this tube too. So it's a very highly purified, um, highly regulated, highly tested product. Mm -hmm. It's one that, you know, there are so many standards that it has to fulfill for it to be labeled Pro Molly 4130 that in essence it's a more pure brand, more pure thing. It's kind of like kind of like distilled water, actual pure distilled water that you use in medical treatments mm -hmm. versus tap water. Right, okay. Kind of th that, that's kind of the analogy sure. of it. So when you start talking by the numbers, Pro Molly 4130 mm -hmm. versus Docol R8, yield strength in PSI, in pounds per square inch, and yield being how the metal bends. So if you take the tube and hold it out there, so it's if you were to put the tube across uh, two bars and make like a bench, correct. And you're going to put something in the middle, right in the middle. Break strength on that for Pro Molly is ninety five thousand psi. Ninety five thousand pounds per square inch. Do call to, to get that to bend. To get it to pop, I believe. To pop. Okay. I believe. I did not have a chance to look up that okay. that test procedure, and I will preface that. Um, Do call R eight which is that dough call we use in race cars, is 100,000 PSI. Right. We, we do know that dough call is a little more bit flexible. Stronger. <clears throat> Correct. A little stronger, a little more flexible. Tensile strength, where you're pulling the metal apart. Stretching it. Stretching it. 1,500, or excuse me, 1,005 PS, or 105,000 PSI for Pro Molly. To stretch it. To stretch it. How far? Did it say? It didn't say. Okay. Doe call, six, 116,000 PSI. Okay. A little bit stronger, a little mm -hmm. bit more flexible. Um, now, here's where it varies. Here's where the products vastly change. This is the biggest difference between 4130 Pro Molly and Doe call. Correct. Pro Molly is a DOM or a seamless tube design. <clears throat> You're not going to have a welded seam. It's not like they're taking a flat piece of stock and then rolling it around and welding it together. Mm -hmm. Doe call is only a seamed tube. Okay. You cannot get it in an extruded round tube. And we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. Okay. Yes. We're going to talk about what some manufacturers believe that is a weakness in the dole call. I wouldn't say. I won't say weakness. I, I would say unaccounted for variable. Okay. Okay. That. Okay. That's a fair word. Okay. Because I didn't mean to say weakness. I did. I meant weakness as um, a characteristic, not strength. Correctly. Okay. I would say a variable. Okay. Right. Or, or characteristic. Here's where it gets fun, and I'm going to put some of this information up on Moxie and Promotions um, mm -hmm. probably tomorrow morning. Okay. Because it's my brain is fried after working all day. You look at the load life data curves. Okay. Now, these are f flex cycles, okay, and how the tube flexes. Given that ProMol is a seamless design, you would expect a very linear um, fatigue life. Be it by linear, I mean it goes from point A to point D, and point B and C are right on that line. Right, in a, a more consistent line. manner. Exactly. And that's what you see out of Promoli 4130. Versus Doe Call. Okay. Now, with it being a seam product, they wanted to give it a fair shake. And this is an independent test done by Westmoreland Mechanical Testing and Research in February of 2014. That's right about when Doe Call started hitting the market in race cars. Okay. Um, they bent it a million times. It conceded it to a, 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 the, a million fatigue cycles. What you see on these data charts are curves. And you see three lines for dough call because they want to give it a fair shake. They did one test where they put the se welded seam of the tube facing straight up. Mm -hmm. One where they put the welded seam facing, or basically facing out or horizontally or, you know, if you at had it at 45, if, at a 90. At a 90. a 90. So if you had it at 12 o'clock, they moved over to 3 o'clock. Right. Then they did one with the welded seam at 6 o'clock or facing down from the fatigue mm -hmm. uh, point. Each one of those different cycles and different 
um, configurations on the test yielded a different result. And that's what we're looking at here on this chart. And that's what you're looking at on that chart. And I will get that posted on Moxie. Right. It, I think a lot of people would like to see that and kind of understand what we're talking about because they can't see the graph. But what I, looking at this, like you said, the, 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 the linear line for ProMoly, very consistent. Now, based upon where the weld was on Dolcal, they're a lot different. Extremely different. I mean, you look at it, and you're talking, you know, load ranges that vary over 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. okay. Over 500 pounds that, I mean, you, that, that and you start talking about flexing race cars, on modifieds, we're typically running springs in the neighborhood of anywhere from 450 to 650 pounds. Right. My question, inch. how long is this piece that they tested? It doesn't say. It doesn't say, and I I need to pull that test to figure, you know, the the. Yeah, because the, the amount of deflection it's showing in here, you know, if well, you're talking a foot to a exactly. ten foot. Exactly. You know. So this. And it is so, a standardized test. That's the beauty okay. of it. Well, and that's great. That's great because you've got some kind of consistency. Okay. We've got a caller. This okay. is going to be entertaining. This is going to no. This is going to be good. Northwest Dirt News. Caller, are you there? Yep. Is that Mike Miller? Yep. I knew it. <laughs> Mike, we are talking forty-one thirty Pro Molly Steel versus Dole Call. Okay. Um, I know that you recently. I'm having, I'm having a hard time hearing you, man. Okay. Let me get over here real quick. So, All right. on tonight's tech segment, we're talking 4130 Pro Molly or Chrome Molly seamless steel versus Dole Call. A lot of manufacturers using the Chrome Molly, the Pro Molly product. You, being one of the guys building cars, have a belief in Dole Call. We were just talking with Joel, and Joel was talking about one of the benefits of 4130, the Pro Molly, is the linear. What, what are the, what's the word we're looking for, Joel? Consistency. Consistency. In a bend. And he was he mentioned, uh, and we're going to put a graph up here shortly on Moxie, he mentioned that with dole call through the standardized test, standardized test that um, being that dole call is not seamless, it has a weld in it, that the flexibility of that product was different based upon where that seam is in the construction of the race car. I want to talk a little bit about that with you and the, the two different products and why you chose Dole Call on the X-Factor VS1 Dirt Late models. All right, yeah. So, well, we're, go ahead. Well, uh, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of, everybody's got their own opinion, and this is just an opinion game. I mean, yeah, because guess what? If you go to AED's website, they're going to tell you that, that Dole Call is better than Chrome Olive. And so, you know, it all depends on what, you know, what you want to use and what you, you know, what you believe in. I mean, there, you, I don't know if people realize this, but Dokal is used in everyday cars that are rolling down the street. It's a, it's a huge safety thing. Uh, it, it's made for A-fillers, foot boxes, bumpers. It's consistent product. They know they're going to get the same thing out of it every time. Um, it's strong. I mean, you know. The whole seam thing, I, you know, there's all kinds of race cars that are built with seam. Um, if you're really going to get into that, I mean, I, I understand that part of it. I mean, you know, a lot of people are going to look at it and say, God, it's got a seam. Yeah, but there's lots of tests that, you know, that it's fine. The uh, the biggest thing, like, for me, picking Doko was it's, safety factor. I mean, it's point of impact is better than, than chromoly. It's, it's wall thickness consistency is, consistency is better than chromoly or promoly. I don't really know much about promoly. I just know against chromoly. They're um, basically, they're pretty much identical. Yeah. That's kind of what mm -hmm. I thought. And you know, there's been you don't get me wrong. Think about it. Rocket cars have been built out of chromoly for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. You know? Um... But now all of your rocket cars are all being built out of Dokal, you know. And the guy that designed that that Longhorn car designed the VF or designed the XR1, which is the you know, new 
the new Same rocket guy. car.